Hi guys and welcome back to NodeFlow. Today we're taking a look to the new Biome tools introduced in Houdini 20.5. I recently had the chance to attend a conference where I saw the potential of this system and so I decided to make a tutorial for you guys, hoping you will find it interesting. So without further ado, let's fire up Houdini and let's start. So just a disclaimer before starting, the system was built by the guys at ZFX Labs, so ensure you have the latest Labs build that at the time of this recording is the 20.5.572. So now we can start by creating a geonode and I will just name it Biomes. I will then go inside and if I look for Biome, these are all the tool set that we have available. I will start with a Biome plant define. So basically this node is giving the plant info about where to spawn based on temperature and precipitation amount. So you could change all the settings over here like the temperature and precipitation like where the plant is allowed to spawn if we go here and we press enter in the viewport and then space g to center our view you will see that we have a very visual way to understand what's going on so this is the name of the node so for the sake of this i will just name it tree and you will see on the x-axis of this cartesian plane we have the average annual temperature and then on the y-axis we have the annual precipitation so it's very easy to understand what's going on if i want my plant to spawn when it's very hot and where it's very rainy. Of course, I am in the tropical rainforest. So these are all possible biomes that exist in the real world. And just by moving this bounding box, you are creating a range of values where your plant should spawn. If I just move it around, I'm basically changing these parameters on the right. I just think, of course, that moving it in the viewport is way more intuitive. And then I can go into the species variants, and here is where I can add my plants or my plants library. So if I have a library, maybe I have a directory on my PC and I want to reference everything in, I don't need to do everything manually one by one over here and then import in the path, right? I can just put here my directory path, and then I can click on auto field variants, and that will basically fill everything with your trees for you. In this case, again, to make everything simpler, I didn't want to use an external asset so i know for a fact that inside of this node there are some embedded assets right that we can access with the opdef syntax i will go here and i will look for opdef colon point question mark and now i'll write the name of the asset i want to reference s m and then i'm looking for coniferous tree growth one and then it should be bgo point sc so if i did everything correctly and i press enter i should see a nice tree spawn down here so this is kindly provided by side effects so we can experiment with it and now if i want to add also a dead variant so a variant that doesn't have the leaves i need to change the dead ratio so this is chance that i will find a dead variant right i will say maybe like a 20 percent I think it's fine. And then I will just copy this path, paste it. And instead of growth, I will just write that. Be mindful, of course, of the upper cases, right? Otherwise you will not be able to find it. And again, if you did everything correctly, you should see these two plants pouring down here. We can also define different stages of life of the plant. If zero is when the plant is born and one is when the plant dies, we can define this plant that is the smallest one to only be present from zero to 0 0.33. And then I'm going to create extra plants. So we'll press plus and I will just copy the same paths as before i will set that ratio to 0 0.2 exactly as before and the only thing i will need to change on both of them here is the number this will not be number one this will be number two and also here this will be number two as you can see the number two is bigger and the number three will be even bigger so don't forget to specify the age range we want this medium tree to be from 0 0.33 to 0 0.66 and then if i press plus again i can now create third variation again just a copy paste of the same and we want to change the number from two to three i will then change the dead ratio to unlock my dead parameter over here and again i will just paste the dead one and set it to three don't forget about the age range so if this is one this one is the biggest we want to see it from 0.66 to one and now we have completed database that we can use to spawn our trees correctly but before doing that let's check some extra important parameters so if we go here into the species settings we have something that is worth changing so first of all the type of course they are trees right they are not shrubs so let's change it to trees but there is a reason why we're doing that basically the trees are not allowed to spawn like under other trees right they have to respect this space over here uh, if we have some shrubs they're technically are allowed to spawn under the trees we have the bound radius is the spacing that is necessary between each plant and each instance is useful for how many plants do you want to spawn because of course if the plants can be that close when you actually do a scatter there will be a lot of them so again conversely if you do something like that there will be very few plants when you do 
the scatter. So I think a value of 1.3, I guess, was fine. You see, they're not really intersecting. I mean, they are, so maybe a value of 0.5. Yeah, yeah, that, that works. Um, and then the trunk radius, it's something that could be changed. Basically, this one allows the shrubs to spawn this close to the tree or this far to the tree. So this is the same idea, but not for the trees, it's for the shrubs. Maybe a value of 0 0.75 could be fine, but again, we are not using any kind of shrubs. Again, I guess it's just a nice option that we need to know. If when we did the scatter, after we see that there are too many of them, we can always change the maximum density over here. Now we have our plants and we have different stages for our plant and we have different variants like the growth one and that one. Now we need that rain. And of course I will not be explaining how to make the rain in Udini because I have a whole series about that and please if you're curious about it, go watch it. I just want this tutorial to be straight to the point of how to use the biome tool set. So I will just be going into the terrain effects shelf and then I will create a terrain hills. Just for the sake of it, if you don't have the terrain effects over here, go here and then shelves and you will find the terrain effects over here, right? So I will be creating the first one, the hills. I will click on it and then I will just wait for it to compute. Once I have it, I don't want to use any erosion as I don't want it to make too complex for now. I will then just add a height field resample. I will just then change it to two. So I'm doubling the resolution. And then to make it a little bit more detailed, I will add a height field distort by noise. And now if you notice over here, when I plug it in, it looks way more interesting just if I leave it by default. And so that's what we are doing for our terrain. I will then add a null node and I will name it out terrain. I will then copy my null. I will go again into my biomes. And with an object merge, as you probably know, I will just be able to import my terrain over here. So I have my terrain and I have my plants. Technically my plants, they know where to spawn based on what I did over here, but my terrain has no information of temperature or precipitation, doesn't know that here should be warmer or there should be more humidity. So we need to create attributes on this terrain in order for the plants to spawn. So I'll create a biome attributes terrain. And this is sort of like an attribute create, at least to my understanding. Like if I connect it over here, the attributes will not look too interesting. Like if I go to display, even if I just remap them, to an auto normalized range, there, there will not be too much interesting stuff to see. It's just initializing the attributes. In order to make them usable, we need to use a biome attributes evolve. Now just connect it. And now again, if I go into temperature and if I change the remapping to auto normalized range, I will see now something way more interesting. So in the lower parts, I have like a higher temperature. So in valleys and stuff like that. And then in higher parts, I have a colder temperature, of course, because we are talking about mountains and that makes perfect sense. So I don't want to change anything regarding temperature. I think it's fine. But if I change now to precipitation, you see this mask is just a directional mask. It comes from this size and everything that is not basically facing this size, it will be out of the mask. So if I go in precipitation, I can control this mask with the remove by direction. But for now, I'll just remove it completely because I want to show you something that I think is way cooler, the remove by convexity. So this mask basically shows us all the areas where it's more concave, right? And so technically the rain will accumulate over there. There will be higher humidity. And so based on how you set your plants, they will spawn over there if they want more humidity. And then I also want to add the direction thing. I think it helps us to have like a more complex mask. Again, I will leave this one as default. Now that I'm happy with temperature and precipitation, I want to change my soil. So let me go here and click on soil. And it's basically just a noise, but something cool that it has is that of course, plants, they don't really spawn in parts that are very vertical, like cliffs. And that's why we have this remove by slopes. Amazing, I'm happy with it. So I will change it to input again. And now we can finally create a biome scatter. Now I can connect my plants into the first input and my terrain into the second input and I will just wait for it to compute. So you notice that we will not see the trees, we'll just see points, right? So these points of course have a representation of the, the two radius that we have set up, the outer radius and the trunk radius and that's made to make it easier to work in the viewport. In the case that we want to actually see the proper plants on top of our terrain, we will need to create a node called instance. This node is basically already set up so we can just visualize it and as you can see we have a very, very natural distribution of our plants. Following rules are temperature and precipitation amount. And if you want to see it with the terrain itself, we will create a height field convert and then I will create a merge and now I can visualize both of them together. As you can see, we have a very, very nice distribution. So I don't know if you have been doing scattering with the tools that we have in Udini, they are amazing, but to get like this sort of distribution, you really need to play a lot. And so 
you saw I left everything as default, mainly, I just changed very few things, and already looks quite amazing. So please take your time to change stuff to make it more appealing. In the next lesson, we'll basically check how to create multiple biome regions, so maybe it's something that is more like tropical forest and something that is more desert in the same terrain, and we'll also check some more advanced workflows. So I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial, I really hope you learned something new. If you did, please subscribe and leave a like, as it really really helps me in what we are doing over here. I will see you next time, cheers!